Hello, Teach Now. My name is Chris, and today I want to talk to you about an important piece of legislation that impacts American higher education, Title IX of the Education Amendments Act of 1972. Title IX states that no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any educational program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Because almost all public and private universities in the United States receive some sort of federal funding in the form of student financial aid, they must abide by Title IX. Those of us from the United States have most likely heard of Title IX from its application in student athletics. However, though its use in university athletics has had the greatest visibility, Title IX applies to all aspects of education including access to education, courses offered, educational career paths, and health services. Title IX is designed to benefit both women and men. However, Title IX has most notably impacted women's education by attacking the barriers and restrictions in education that have been historically faced by women. Barbara Winslow, a historian and teacher at Brooklyn College, described life for young women before Title IX by saying this. Young women were not admitted into many colleges and universities. Athletic scholarships for women were rare, and math and science was a realm reserved for boys. Girls square danced instead of playing sports, studied home economics instead of training for male-oriented trades. Girls could become teachers and nurses, but not doctors or principals. Women rarely were awarded tenure and even more rarely appointed college presidents. There was no such thing as sexual harassment because boys will be boys after all, and if a student got pregnant, her formal education ended. Graduate professional schools openly discriminated against women. With the passage of Title IX in 1972, things began to change. Challenging gender stereotypes was one of the first effects of Title IX. Before the introduction of Title IX, boys were traditionally believed to be good at math and science, while girls were thought to be good at domestic activities. Students were therefore ushered into a curriculum of study based on gender stereotypes. Even in textbooks, these gender stereotypes permeated, with girls depicted as nurturing wives and mothers and boys shown as powerful and aggressive. With the introduction of Title IX, these stereotypes began to be challenged in both the classroom and in textbooks. Young men could now enroll in teaching or nursing, while young women could take classes in welding or engineering, areas of study previously restricted based on gender. Title IX provided students with their first opportunity to identify and pursue individual skills and attributes, rather than passively fall into outdated stereotypes of career thinking. Prior to the 1970s, colleges and universities could legally refuse to admit women. Of the schools that did admit women, many continued down the gender stereotype path of only allowing women to train for careers deemed suitable, such as housekeepers, nurses, and teachers. In fact, in 1972, when Title IX was signed, only 7% of law degrees and 9% of medical degrees were earned by women. Thanks to the influence of Title IX, more women than men are now enrolled in college. Because schools can no longer dictate which students take which courses based on gender stereotypes, men and women now have access to previously restricted higher educational training. Focusing on women in particular, this has sparked growth in the number of women pursuing degrees in science and technology. Additionally, women now make up 47% and 48% of law and medical degrees respectively. What happened if you were a young female student who got pregnant prior to Title IX? You were legally expelled. If you were the young man known to be the father, however, you received no form of punishment. Women were protected from such blatant educational discrimination with the passing of Title IX, which called for schools to create educational programs which followed comparable curriculums for pregnant students. Entry into the program must be voluntary, allowing for pregnant women to stay enrolled in their normal classes if they so chose. The benefits are obvious, as young women can continue along their chosen educational journey without fear of punishment or substandard curriculum.
So what does this all mean? While there are still gains to be made, the impact of Title IX has been far-reaching. Greater access to higher education equates to greater access for women to a career of their choosing, with opportunities for advancement, leadership, lifestyle freedom, and independently created financial security. But Title IX isn't without its flaws. Due to its language, debate looms over how it applies to transgender students. Under the Obama administration, Title IX's prohibitions on discrimination were extended to include claims of gender identity. However, in 2017, the Trump administration reversed those guidelines, leaving Title IX's application in those cases in doubt. Also with the introduction of Title IX, many universities found the cost of creating equality to be too expensive. These schools opted to cut athletic programs, scholarship numbers, and educational programs in order to comply with the regulation rather than expand to offer greater access. Critics also point to unequal allocation of university funds, citing that on average, women make up 53% of the student body at public university, but receive only 40% of the funding for education and athletics access. In 2017, NCAA Executive Vice President of Education and Community Engagement, Bernard Franklin, summed up Title IX with this statement. While it is very encouraging to see progress has been made over the last 45 years with respect to the federal law Title IX and opportunities for women, the data also shows that there is still much to be done to increase equity and diversity. As we move forward, it's worth celebrating the progress and positive gains made possible with Title IX while also continuing to recognize that there is further yet to go.